Okay, welcome to Chapter 2. And Chapter 2, we're going to be looking at physical changes dealing with phase changes. And really where it all stems from has to do with heat and temperature. And I know some of this stuff we've already talked about back in Unit 1B. Uh, so we're going to rehash some things dealing with temperature. But we're going to look more in depth and seeing how heat and temperature are related. So we got to start off, well, what is heat? Well, we already know about temperature. And we know that with heat, it's very closely related to temperature in that we're talking about motion or kinetic motion. Now heat we look at as a form of energy associated with motion and that could be the particles of matter whether they be atoms or whether they be molecules. We know that they're going to be moving in all phases of matter, solid, liquids, and gases. And if we remember from back when, we know that when we add heat to something that particles move faster, they have more energy, and if we take heat away, we remove energy, those particles are going to slow down. But we can also look at heat as a transfer of energy, because one of the things that we're going to see in this unit is that when energy is present, it's always looking to go somewhere to establish equilibrium. And what we mean by equilibrium is that everything is equal. So when we look at heat as a transfer of energy, we're looking at it as it going from one body to another, one thing to another, because of the difference in temperature. Some of those particles are moving faster, other particles are moving slower, so we want all of those particles to be moving at the same speed, so heat is going to transfer, and it's always going to flow from high energy, or for something that's hot, to low energy, which is something that's cold. Now, how heat it transfers depends on a few things. Well, one of them it deals with the amount of matter, which is the mass that we have, and it has to do with the temperature, which, remember, is a measurement of the hotness of something or the average kinetic energy or speed of those particular particles. So that's something that we need to consider when we're looking at heat. It also depends on the phase of matter. Now, we've been kind of concentrating on solids, liquids, and gases. And later on in this unit, we'll talk about two other phases, the Bose-Einstein condensate, as well as plasma. So all of these things can affect how heat transfers and how particles move in matter. So how is temperature different? Well, again, we know that temperature is a measurement of the hotness, how hot or how cold something is to a reference point. Now, with those reference points, what we looked at before were the temperature scales. The Celsius and Fahrenheit scale, they were based on water, right, and how, how, how cold water could get and how hot water could get when it boiled. We also looked at in terms of the Kelvin scale, and the Kelvin scale really being only the true scale of of temperature because it was based on particle motion. But whatever scale we use, we're basing it on one of those particular reference points. And again, temperature is a result of the speed of the particles in those substances. And the value that we measure, whether it's on a thermometer or a temperature probe or something of that sort, is an average of the kinetic motion of those particles. That means that some of the particles are moving faster, other particles are moving slower, so the value that we're getting is an average of those fast and slow particles. Now, continuing, well, we need a brain break. And we all know in class what we need a brain break, so we're going to step away from the computer here for a minute. We're going to get up, we're going to stretch, we're going to take a break from our, from our daily activity here. And today's Chuck Norris fact of the day, being that it's very close to Halloween, that ghosts sit around the campfire and they tell Chuck Norris stories. So now we come back and let's now continue on talking about heat. So how do I measure heat? Well, we already know how to measure temperature. That's the way that we use either a thermometer or some sort of temperature probe. But the way we measure heat is in calories. Now, hopefully you're familiar with calories. If you look on any package of food, it's going to tell you how many calories that food has. Calories is a unit of energy, and in this case, heat energy. And we define a calorie as the amount of heat energy required to raise the temperature of one gram of water, one degree Celsius. So that we know if I add 10 calories of heat to one gram of water, it's going to raise the temperature 10 degrees. Now this is a little different than the calories that you see on food. The, the calories you see on your food are actually a big C, and that stands for kilocalories. And those of you who maybe have been to Europe before have seen it expressed as kcals, which is 
technically more correct than what we have, but this is how we're going to define the calories. So to be able to calculate heat of water, to be able to know how much heat is gained or lost, we need to know two things. Number one, we need to know how much water we have, and that's usually in mass. Now keep in mind, a lot of times we know with water we're measuring volume, but remember that the density of water is one gram per milliliter. We also need to know the change in temperature, which we refer to as delta T, and delta is the Greek symbol for change. And the way I find delta T is final temperature minus the starting temperature. So you'll see here in, the, in our presentation, T final stands for my final temperature, T start is my starting temperature. And it needs to be that way because it's very important when I go to calculate heat if I get a positive or negative value because that's going to tell me if heat has been gained or heat has been lost. And the units as far as what we would find heat in would normally, if we do go through our equation, which you're going to see here in a moment, would be grams degrees Celsius, but since one gram degrees Celsius is the amount of heat required to raise that water, we can then just look at it in terms of a calorie. So the way that we find heat is mass times change in temperature. Now, one thing I want to point out here is that delta T value and how important it is that it's my final minus my starting because that ultimately is going to tell me if I have added heat or removed heat. If I go through my equation and I get a positive value for heat, that means that I've added heat and that it's getting hotter, which makes sense. My delta T is going to be positive. But if I get a negative value for heat, that means heat is going to be removed. It's going to be taken away, and I'm going to get a negative value. But it also means that it's going to be get, get cooler. And that, again, will make sense when we go to calculate. But I still have to indicate by that positive or negative value if indeed I do have a, a added heat or, my re, or I've removed my heat. So now that we know about that, let's take a look at a quick example of a problem that we can try dealing with heat. So this is your typical heat problem, and this is the way that it's set up. And we look at, we say a quantity of water is heated from 38 degrees Celsius to 62 degrees Celsius. How much heat is added to the 260 gram sample? Now I'm going to bring up my, my writing up here and I've kind of set it up very similar to the way that we did density early on. I want to write down these things in my problems because of my first three variables heat, mass, and change in temperature I'm going to have two of those three things. I need to be able to go through the problem and figure out what are the two of the three things that I have. Well let's start off and take a look at what we have. Well we have a 260 gram sample and hopefully by now we know that grams is our unit of mass so we can write that in our problem here 260 grams now as far as my other two values heat or change in temperature well if I go look at my values up top I see that I actually have two temperatures I have 38 degrees Celsius I have 62 degrees Celsius and this is the change in temperature that this water has undergone by heating so what I have to look at here is I'm actually going to have to calculate my delta T or my change in temperature by using the starting and the final temperature. Now when we look here, we see it started at 38, so I'm going to write that down as what I call T sub S or the starting temperature. And my final temperature I see is 62 degrees Celsius. So there is the temperatures that my water was at before I started heating and after I started heating. Now when I go to find my delta T, remember final minus starting. So we're going to take my final temperature which is 62 degrees Celsius. I'm going to subtract my starting temperature which is 38 degrees Celsius and that's going to give me a positive 20 degrees Celsius and that's important that it's positive because we saw the temperature increased from 38 to 62 if it was the other way around I'd still get the same number but my value would be negative so now what I can do is go calculate heat and find what my heat is so at this moment what I'd like you to do is pause the video and try to work out heat how do I find heat remember 
mass times delta t. So pause the video here and then let's work it out and see if you got the same answer that I did. Okay, welcome back. I hope you went through your problem here and you identified what you had. We plugged in our, our values here. So let's see if we came out with the same thing. So I'm going to find here my heat, my mass we determined, remember, was 260 grams. And my delta T, or my change in temperature, was 24 degrees Celsius. Now, all I need to do here is I need to multiply those things together. I'm going to bring up a calculator here so that we can see our values. So I'm going to take, clear this out, I'm going to take 260 grams. I'm going to multiply that by 24. And that's going to give me a value of 6,240. Now the value, the the units that I'm going to use here, remember, is grams degrees Celsius, but we can derive that into a calorie. So my answer here would be a positive 6,240 calories. All right, and that's the unit that I, we can use to express heat. A couple key things here, remember, we want our value to be positive because our temperature increased. We want to express that in terms of a positive and we want to give our units in terms of calories. And that's really all these problems are. We're going to be working through a few more in class as we go through the various labs. So this is something you can reference back to if you need to, uh, but this is it for the notes, and I will be seeing you folks tomorrow.